What is this? Take 369? Uh, okay, can we not screw this up? My time's valuable here. All right, can we not screw Hey folks, Jason, JTL, Painfully Honest Tech here today with a review of, of the LG V20 cellular telephone. A miracle of modern science. On paper, this thing is a super phone. It does high, 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 high quality audio. It does amazing stuff with photography. It's got a removable back with a removable battery. It is super solid and military drop specified and all that kind of stuff, so it's durable. The question is, is it the super phone that I've been hoping for, or is it just another phone? Let's go over some of the things that are the pros of this phone. Number one, solidly built. Uh, this They advertise this thing as it maintaining a mil military standard 810G drop rating. I have no idea what that means. It has a removable battery. That's something that is almost long gone in the, the annals of phone world. Uh, this, I think, might be the only phone on the market in the top tier flagship uh, realm that actually offers us a removable battery. You can buy a $35 pack that gets you another battery and a charger. Now, if LG really wanted to get you, they would give you the, that extra battery along with it. They also would give you some headphones, since this thing has a qu high quality DAC. You don't get no, no headphones with this, but you do get a headphone jack. You do get a headphone jack, and I like the headphone jack. I like this removable back. It is easy to take on and off. Uh, it, it accepts the SD cards, so if you have a lot of media that you either create or that you want to carry around with you, you can have that stuff right there. On an SD card, you could swap out SD cards. I have no SD card in here because I stream all my music, although I hate streaming music. Is that What does that mean, high quality DAC? Well, DAC means digital to analog conversion, right? Every phone has a DAC. Every device that has audio that comes out of it has some sort of converter in it. The one that they have in here is advertised as high quality. Plug something in like this. So now we come down here and we find Hi-Fi hi Quad DAC. Now what does Hi-Fi mean? You, a lot of you people might be too young to remember when stereo, good stereos were called Hi-Fi's back in the day. Uh, but Hi-Fi means high fidelity. High fidelity in its most basic definition means the highest possible reproduction of whatever it is that you're listening to fidelity i mean the the the, the per, like the perfectness of the conversion from source to ears right hi-fi i have no idea what a quad dac is uh if anybody does let me know uh but it sounds like marketing words to me uh it it says this is for high impedance devices now, what are high impedance devices? High impedance devices are, let's say, okay, so each headphone has what's called an ohms rating. And you'll sometimes see that listed here. Like if you can read that, there's 50 to 600 ohms, and it has that little omega symbol that indicates ohms. And a low, or a low impedance device that was maybe, say, like 30 ohms could be driven by anything anything so your your ipod earbuds your iphone earbuds most of the things that come in the package with your with your phones this you know the jelly things that you can buy at the airport those are all low impedance they can be driven by anything now high impedance devices on the other hand uh take more power to really get the quality from them that they're capable of and so what what LG has done that really nobody but some some smaller companies like Fio and other other companies who are making audio players with high 
with high quality digital to analog conversion inside. LG is the only company that's brought that to a cell phone. Apple's heritage, where the iPod was the, you know, sort of the, the caveman of the iPhone, they had the audio game kind of already under wraps because they were doing audio before they were doing phone. And they kind of combined phone with their audio player. And so for a long time, Apple has kind of been the audio top dog. But this is something different. Now, I have here my Sennheiser HD 600s. What's the difference? If I plugged in a regular set of headphones, like I, I still use the earbuds that I got with my S8 Plus. So I plugged them in. I turned off the Hi-Fi DAC. It sounded pretty good. I turned on a Hi-Fi DAC. I could tell a difference, but it wasn't like night and day. Then I plugged these guys in. And I think the ohms rating on these guys is 250, maybe 300. I can't quite recall. Maybe I'll put it in the video and let you know. But I decided to plug them into this guy and see what the difference was. So I plugged them in. I turned, I started listening. I was like, I had the hi-fi DAC off. I was like, oh, that's okay. Then I turned the hi-fi DAC on and all of a sudden the headphones came to life. And it wasn't just a volume thing, although they did get louder. They were being pushed harder by this hi-fi DAC. More detail. I felt like I was really hearing these for the first time. It was surprising. Kudos to LG for going that route and really putting a feature into their phone that nobody else is really thinking about. Everybody else has kind of passed by. Thumbs up for that. The next great thing that, that comes on this phone are the cameras. We've got a telephoto lens and we've got a regular smaller lens. I don't know the specs because I didn't do that research, but they're both there. And where I had a problem with getting to manual mode with the S8 Plus, I can get to manual mode just by pressing that button. I can get to auto mode just by pressing that button. And you see here, you've got little trees, three trees, or one tree. Three trees gives you a wide angle. If I go to manual, I can get a halfway decent photo of what I'm doing right now and what the room looks like. This is what it looks like with the regular lens. I could have done a little bit more with that if I took the time to dial it in, but just goes to show you that having this great, really good camera in there is such a nice feature. And uh, it also does great things with video as well. You can, when you're working with video, you can also monitor your audio and really get a lot of control over things. So the camera on this phone, fantastic. I'm very, very impressed. And it takes great photos. I've used it for B-roll. The secondary screen, now the secondary screen here is a bone of contention for many things. Like I've got the JTL here. You can put your name in it. They give you more fonts this time. That's great. Then you can slide over and you've got your toggles. You can turn on and off uh, all kinds of stuff and you can select what you want. Uh, you can play your media back and forth, and that's cool. Uh, you know, whatever media is playing can be controlled up here. Then you've got some contacts that you can put in. As you can see, I have, I have no friends. Then it has recent apps that you've used and your calendar. And there's a, there are a few things that you can put into the secondary screen. And I really like it because the secondary screen stays on all the time when you're using it. And when your phone, when your main screen is off, the secondary screen will continue to show you some of those things that we just went over. And it'll show you when you have notifications. So another great feature of this phone, which was one of the reasons why I didn't pick it up when it was first released back in October of last year, is the price. The price now is down somewhere. I got it at Verizon for something like $500. Uh, you can get it on eBay, online, other places for a hundred dollars or less than that. This kind of powerful phone at five hundred dollars or less is really a great deal, especially when you consider this is a flagship phone. This is a flagship phone that you can get for five hundred dollars right now, so that's something to consider. But, 
Okay, we've talked a long time about the good things. Now let's talk about the bad things. And there's nothing really super bad about this phone. However, there are things. The screen, especially when you compare it next to the S8 Plus, the screen is a little meh. Not so great. It's an okay screen. If you're not, if you don't have a, a better screen beside it, you won't notice. Uh, it's okay. Now another thing that's sort of a con here, but it's a con with an with an asterisk, is I'd had the LG V10 as well. And the battery life on the LG V10 was dismal, absolutely terrible. And the problem was, yes, you can replace the battery. But that means you always have to be carrying around a second battery or you have to deal with battery anxiety like I don't like to deal with. The battery life on this phone is better. It gets you through the day most of the time. It's four o'clock right now and it looks like I have a little over 50%. So I'm happy with the battery life, but it's nowhere near what you would get on an iPhone 7 Plus. Any of the iPhone Plus phones, the battery is just beastly in those phones. So battery life is a problem here. You can get those battery packs and you can get extended batteries like from companies like Zero Lemon where you can get a 10,000 milliamp hour battery but then the phone ends up being like three feet thick. And that's just too much, too much for me. So battery life isn't great but it is better than what it had been. This is where we get into some subjective things. The S8 Plus and the S8 are beautiful pieces of industrial design. They are, you know, they were like candy. Like I wanted to, I wanted to lick them and taste them. They were so beautiful. This phone is not beautiful. The iPhone is a great example of really, really solid, attractive industrial design you look at it and you say, man, that looks great. Especially if you get the right color combinations. But that's subjective as well. The LG phone here, it's at best you could call this utilitarian. At least the V10 had the stainless steel rails down the side and like the, the, st the stippled back and it was just, it was pretty interesting looking. This is not interesting looking. And what's even l less interesting looking is the LG UI. I have Nova Launcher on here right now. I like Nova Launcher. Uh, but when you get into the menus here, the menus with these LG phones are just not awesome. Uh, let's look at the dialer. You don't have a lot of choice. One thing I loved about the Samsung phones is you had themes coming out the wazoo. This is this is one of the two or three themes that LG offers. And it's not what I would want. And if I'm going with Android, and Android is supposed to be like fully customizable, yes, you can use a launcher, and a launcher is going to cover up most of the looks on the phone. It's basic things like the dialer and that kind of stuff that is still going to look like what the company and their UI looks like. And I don't like this. I want more themes, but there was supposed to be a theme store that doesn't seem to exist. So that kind of bothers me. The last thing that's that's a con to me is the big thing. I ha So I kept, I, I got the phone, I kept it for two weeks. Two days after, two days after my my return window closed, the thing started going crazy, started getting buggy, started not doing things, started freezing, having to pull the battery, all this other stuff. That's what I hate about Android. It's 2017. We shouldn't be dealing with stuff like that. Say what you want about an iPhone, but man, 99.9% .9 of the time, your iPhone works. You're, if you have a Mac computer, you can leave it on for 10 years. And usually it'll be right there, ready to go when you need it. This phone just started to get buggy. It started to get weird, and then I couldn't return it. And so I kind of I kind of got stuck because the resale on this is I'd be lucky to get 300 bucks of the 550 I, pay, I spent on it. So such a disappointment. So what's the conclusion here? LG V20. Is it the super phone that it could have been? Is it the phone that 
somehow serves the needs of a lot of folks who are being left behind. Is it that phone? Well, I mean, it does all those things incredibly well. But when you talk about it as a phone, it's just a phone. And as a phone, it's just kind of meh. It's not really all that great. It's not really all that special. Which is disappointing, because what it does well, high quality audio, all that kind of stuff, what it does well, it does really well. But my question to you is this. Now, if Apple had designed this phone, it would be sexy. Like, what if this was the Apple, you know, the, the iPhone Pro, with great microphones, with great camera, with great audio, with great listening, you know, where you get a headphone jack. If Apple had built this phone, it would be amazing. LG has built this phone, and they've got some cool features, but it's not amazing. And that's really where it falls down. It needs to be great at what a phone does, and sometimes it's not, and that's really where we are with the LG V20. Do you guys have any questions, thoughts? Otherwise, this has been kind of a long video. Maybe I've cut it down, and it's not as long as it seems like it is right now. But I wanted to cover this in depth. I wanted to talk about the good and the bad of this phone. It is a great value right now if you're in the market for a phone and you maybe want to not, not spend a ton of money. I like this phone. I'm not in love with this phone. And I want to be in love with my phone. What do you think about that? Talk to me down in the comments. Thanks for being here. Until the next time, this is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This has been a painfully honest review of the LG V20. Until the next time, I'm out.